Right, James. Yes. I've got a bit of a weekly roundup of finished commissions to show off to you. I'm very, yeah. very excited. I'm quite excited to get your thoughts <laughs> on some of these. As you can see, some of them are uh, pretty bright, pretty in your face. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, we're actually <laughs> going to start with the brightest uh, and most in your face one. We've got an order change. Are we going yeah. to a disco? By <laughs> Painted by Eric to gold level. Yeah. Have a look at that. Yeah. Give me some of your initial thoughts on that. Well, the base itself is really cool because it's been made for the model. Um, I'm guessing the client likes discos or partying because that base is <laughs> um, that base is pretty phenomenal. Um, they didn't specify whether they like how much they like partying, but they did specify. I mean, just a, as a little clue, the first word on the painting brief for this was synthwave. Yeah, I, I, the base screams that and the, <laughs> the, the, the techno colours are just amazing. So Yeah, the so base yeah. was, the specific request on the base was um, a kind of reference image of the classic synthwave grid yeah, yeah, pattern yeah. that you see. Yes. Yeah, um, and that's pretty much all the instruction was. The rest of it was all, was all Eric um yeah, he's coming done, up with the levels of, on the base everything. it's done amazing it's really cool the way i think the levels just really help show that synth wave off if it was flat i think it'd lose quite a lot of its like sort of presence but having it at the different levels just really just helps the curvature of the of the um the sort of pattern which is good got a little base buddy yeah that, base buddy. that was actually a suggestion by the uh <laughs> the client as well they said uh they thought that the, the kit maybe came with a few little uh a few little, little base buddies little, that could potentially still be there. Little flame of the zinch throwing some shapes. It's yeah, great. yeah, it's cool. It's uh, there was also a specific request of nothing realistic on the base. Yeah, like yeah. They didn't want any rubble or any like yeah. actual ruins or, or things like that, which I think is nice. I love the continuation of the of the like, sort of pink to orange transition on the tabard. I think that's probably one of my favourite things. Um, and I really like the um, colour of the the sort of not it's not bone, but the the I don't know what part of the flesh this is, but it's like the, it's the, the tougher kind of like tougher kind of. Material. I get what you mean. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like the hardened areas yeah. around the the feet and everything. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like like yeah, like, like a nail kind of material. But like it looks a lot like uh, like uh, chitin from Tyranids. I was going to say it feels to me a bit like the the armor that you get on Tyranids. Yeah, where it's kind of skin flesh, but not but not kind of yeah. things yeah. like hardened. Yeah. Yeah, do you um, know the, the the bluish tinge on the metallics as well, like to complement the uh, and contrast the 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 orange is just great, um, and it works really well with the pink. It's really really lovely. Right? Yeah, it it was, it was a, a wild spec. Um, yeah, and that you you said about the gradient on the on the tabard that was mostly that was a request for the wings, and I think Eric has just taken it upon himself to to put it on the tabard yeah, it looks as well, great. which is really cool. It looks great, absolutely phenomenal, really really good. Um, yeah, really. The wings are really impressive as well, and uh, there's almost like a deep sort of like magentary purple as well, just in the deeper parts before it goes to the dark blue as well, which is just mm. a really good use of color, um, just to get the tone to shift as it has. Um, but yeah, no, really, really lovely. I like it. I think my, my probably my favorite thing has to has to be the um, the tabard. But yeah. I do, I do, I really love the color of the tone on this on this flesh area here. I think that's just really cool. It works with the, yeah. Is that kind of similar colour you get on like the beak as well? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's very similar to that. That's why. That's why I was like saying it's like a harder material as well. Yeah. I think the eye being in yellow as well just really just adds a lot of focus to that part of the miniature. But um, but yeah, it's great. It's really really well done. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, we actually have. Um, I'm gonna pass that one back. For this client, we've done three models um, in this showcase, all painted by Eric, all gold level. Um, and the next one we're going to look at is Bellicor. This is for the same... The Dark Master himself. Yeah, this is for the same yeah. client. They specifically said that they do not need to look like they even come from the same universe. So that's why the base in there... Uh, there's right. less. There's a little bit less synth wave on, on Bellicor. Yeah, they're, they're, it's, you know you go to those clubs and they've got like different rooms, different floors. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like that's what they yeah, are. That's literally, yeah, that's Yeah, Bellicor's in the room where they're playing Slipknot and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, um, any uh, yeah. Any th first thoughts on this one? The base is awesome. The I, I I as much as I really really love like lava world basin and like sort of like uh, a kind of flame basin. I think that this is this is really nice. The it's still really bright and really vibrant and obviously contrasts the darker tones and the muty palette on the on the on the piece. But but like having it not super garish and it's still glowing and still orange but it's not like overpowering the model like you don't your eye doesn't instinctively get drawn just to the base um 
yeah, obviously full and ultra marine on the base, which is uh, which is uh, a worthy worthy sort of like sacrifice for chaos. But yeah. um, actually, uh, once we get onto the third model that we did for him, it's, it's not the only full and ultra marine yeah. <laughs> on this uh, on this selection of models. So I don't know what he's got against ultra marines, or if it's yeah. just a complementary color. But, no, uh, it's 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 great, I, and I think just right away, like the really subtle um, subtle vein work on the wings is just really nice. Um, I think sometimes when veins are done on miniatures, they sometimes look a bit stark. Like on this and this, is the, it's nice and subtle and just doesn't really sort of, um, doesn't sort of take away from other details on the model. Yeah, it's getting that look right of making sure it looks like they're kind of behind the skin. It's or, yeah. so difficult, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Like, because if you do just paint them on, it almost looks like you're doing like a freehand pattern or exactly, a, a yeah. highlight or something. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, do you know what? I never noticed that one of the skulls hanging from the chains is a, is a, has got a bionic eye. I've never noticed that till till, till looking at this. This well, it's funny you mentioned the skulls. One of the one of the specific requests, and it's actually one of my favourite things that he's requested on the model, is that he specifically asked for the skulls to have these like glowing eyes. Yeah, to, to he wanted it to feel like um, the skulls was being almost like animated or kept alive with like a you know a magic power and i think that's a really cool thing yeah um, do you know what like it's really nice that the back of the model is, is just all dark um and i think that that's quite even though it's also still fully painted fully highlighted and all the things that we do like as per normal models but like the fact that the bright all the brightness is at the front and it's kind of like it's a perfect border to surround him as well which is just really nice um, the blood on the chest is great as well it actually looks really wet which i think is just it, when you do blood effects they need to look like they're they're wet unless obviously it's a wound that's very old but you wouldn't have better call with a dried wound it would it, <laughs> yeah. it'd be it'd be it'd be flowing which is yeah. which it is which is just great again another another specific request on the client that was i wanted some particular attention on that uh yeah that chest wound that chest marking yeah the two-tone on the flesh cape as well uh not to cape the tabards that lip that's so it really it's a good use of, of like of thought when it comes to the the inner part being a lot redder and a lot a lot more raw looking to the outside. Um, so obviously you've got the the, the the actual skin part that's facing with all the chains and skulls and hooks and things like that. And then that overlap on the top of the, almost like a, not a belt, but like the overlap flap of flesh here being darker red is just, yeah. is I just mean, really good. Again, it's interesting the things you're picking up on because a lot of this is specific client requests. Like he, he's, he had, he was very particular about, uh, it's funny that we talk about sometimes on the, um, on Paint Perspective podcast that we, or have these specific things that we're like particularly drawn to or they have to be right and they're all these little like niche things and yeah like, i was talking recently about how like pilots on models like when they're sitting in their chairs <laughs> and stuff just looks funny to me like yeah. and i guess people get specific about different things and he one of his was clearly how flesh is painted like yeah, it, yeah. he doesn't want it looking cartoony he wanted it looking realistic which isn't always done no no correct, um, yeah yeah the sword is great as well, like the flames in blue just works really nicely with the subtle purple and the glow effects on the eyes of the skulls. Um, it's just really yeah. good. Um, but yeah. I, I find it really interesting that between these two models, like you couldn't get further apart no, the you're visual right. yeah, yeah. thing. And we talk about maybe like preferring a certain style sometimes, like preferring uh, old school heavy metal box art or preferring grim dark or something. And, and yeah, sometimes yeah. we forget you can just like it all. Yeah, yeah no, totally. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, I just I've even just noticed as well now that on the on the right thigh plate of armor, the, the bluish kind of glue uh, glow, subtle glow as well from the blade. Again, glow effects sometimes are a bit over the top. Like this is just nice and subtle, so it's, it shows that it's refracting the light or the flame effect, but it's not like at a disco. If that makes yeah. sense. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. Well, um, leading on from the the discussion about the flesh. Uh, looking realistic that takes us on to the third model for this client again painted by eric again gold level and that is uh fabulous fabulous bill, bill. Mr. Fabulous, Mr. fabulous bill um and his little friend yeah his little so friend. we'll have a look at his little friend in you a can see what i mean about the realistic skin on the cape if you want to just start off looking at that yeah i mean i for me uh, i absolutely like the fact that it's got loads of different tones of, of skin on the cape i think the good thing about it is it shows that he's almost like i would think if it, if Fabius for me, with all the experimenting and stuff that he does, it would make perfect logical sense that he has specifically cultivated all the flesh that's gone into the garment. It gives the impression um, that it's been built over time yeah, a little yeah. bit more. 
Yeah, and and it's got a combination of different tones of skin, which I think is great, as I mentioned. And then at the same time, you've got a nice dirty and weathered effect on the skin towards the bottom as well to show that it's obviously adding environmental engagement, which I think is great. Um, nice. Re, it's, Eric's done a great job with the subtlety of the blood effects and sort of like any spatters and things that are on there. Like on the back, there's some really subtle little spatters and things of blood. Um, again, I think blood can sometimes be done a bit OTT, whereas with this, it's just nice and refined. Um, he also looks really old as well, which I think is good. What he's done with like um, uh, Fabius's actual face and details is also really good. Yeah, so uh, similar to the request on the cape, obviously you could tell that the the desired look was a bit more of a dark, realistic version. And some of the requests from the client was more menacing face than you might see on the box art, like yeah, less yeah. bright colours in general. The liquid in the vials, he wanted them toned down a little bit, not as bright, yeah, yeah. unless it was going to be like a, I think they specifically said, unless it was going to be like an acid green, then they'd be okay with that. Yeah. Um, even with the hair, they asked for that to look more dirty. And, and, it is, and, yeah, it's really it's really haggard towards the end. So it's got yeah. almost like a yellowish yellowish tinge to it as well, like a, not yellow, but like a real pallid kind of colour to it as well. Yeah. Which is, and I always find great. it interesting when someone asks for a, in particular, like a face to look more menacing or a face to look more angry or a face to look more older when it's all the same sculpt. Yeah. And it's interesting how much uh, the paint makes can, a difference. Exactly what yeah. you can do with yeah. the painting. Yeah, the, all the vials as well. I, I, I absolutely love glass vials and, and sort of like that effect of like liquid in them as well. Um, I've got, I can't ignore the base as well. Like I'm a big fan of jungle basing, obviously. Um, but like uh, I think that the colour colour contrast between the dark, rich mauve of, the, of his armour and the base just works really well. Mm. Having those really vibrant leaves and that sort of some of those sort of uh, uh, plants that are on there that just contrast the armour quite nicely, just really, I, I always say this, like a base is supposed to be like a border or a frame to a model. It should, shouldn't overpower, but it should complement. And this does. This is a perfect, perfect example of that. Um, I think, and I'm, I'm going to perhaps correct me if I'm wrong, I think one thing that I've noticed on this, and whether it's intentional or not, but I think that it, it's quite cool if it is intentional, is the leaf that's under the almost syringe-like part of the gun has got this little hole as if like liquid is like it's spilled like burned out, through yeah, it. burned through, yeah. It's little things like that that add that little element of narrative or story to the model as well, which I think is just great. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is awesome. Absolutely yeah. love it. And Do then take a look at the let's, little. Let's surgeon. have a look at his surgeon acolyte. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so here's the other fallen ultramarine <laughs> train, yeah. that I was mentioning earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It's, it's a really cool model. Like seeing like someone that, that works alongside him is also is also great as well. Um, it's quite interesting. I, I've always liked this model because it, it it's always sort of like begged a question of whether this is like a, a, a Astartes that maybe didn't make it through through the full training or through full sort of like, uh, like conversion from human to full Astartes because he's got the he's got the ports and jack points on his arms and stuff and I'd imagine he's obviously got the rest on, on his body or whatever but but um, it's quite cool to have him at, by, with, with, with Fabius and uh, again really good use of it, it almost looks like he's the one that does get to do all the dirty work because He's obviously got a little bit of spatter and stuff on him, Fabius, but this guy's got way more blood. A bit more caked. A bit more caked, yeah. He does, uh, he does, he does all the work. I love the way that he's got like his foot on the on the breastplate as well. The Marines so, like a bit of extra leverage. I've never, I, didn't, I, didn't, I never realised that, but but yeah, no, um, this is awesome. It's really cool. And again, the basing is great. It, it's uh, overall, obviously, the miniatures are a bit more desaturated in some in some of its colours. Obviously, like the, the lower part of the cloth work, the um, the the vibrancy of the blue just works really nicely as well. On the it's Marine. like surprising amount of detail for a small model yeah it's a it's a really cool model you've effectively got half a space marine on the base as well yeah yeah you yeah have to paint. yeah yeah and the metallics being really dirty as well just just works with the overall piece as well it's just really really great um so yeah he's awesome he's yeah. absolutely smashing uh so we've got the last big big boy on been looking, this one. Been looking forward to look at this yeah so this is a wraith knight um painted by danny danny yeah, yeah. for uh silver level yeah so so right from the get-go, it has got so many soul stones on it, uh, and I absolutely love what Danny's done with the tone of this. Like the, the almost like deep Merlot kind of burgundy kind of colour is is really great. And against the kind of like darker black grey armour, it's it's a hard one to call actually whether the armour is actually like a black or a grey. But so it's, the, it's real... I can shed some light on that for you. Uh, <laughs> the the request is it is a grey. Yeah, it's obviously got a bit of a kind of blue hue to it in, yeah, in a way it, 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 it reminds me a little bit of like the heresy space walls yeah you're right but actually. even a bit darker maybe. yeah you are right um, yeah 
It's, a, it's an unusual color, but it was specifically requested. There was a reference image that the client sent of another rave night that had been painted. Um, they didn't mention where it was from or who had painted it or anything, but um, I imagine they just found it online. Um, so we did our best to match that kind of color. Yeah, it's great. Um, I, I thought it was interesting how like the gems themselves are quite dark and the armor's quite dark, but it still looks really good. Like I think your initial uh, kind of instinct would be, oh, I better make the gems really bright so they contrast. No, the... it's great. Like the, and then what, what Danny's done with all of that, like, I'm a massive fan of a double dot catch light and Danny's done an amazing job on all of these because these are absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, don't, I think it's great though because the armor is obviously quite desaturated and you, even though the, the, the soul stones uh, or spirit stones are, are quite dark, all the highlight stages on the spirit stones are really bright as well just to show that light emanating through them which is which is really cool. But the um, for me it's the high contrast, the head, even though it's a desaturated white, it, it's still bright enough that against the colour of the armor it, it contrasts hugely which is really good. Um, I'm, I am a big fan of these metallics, like the coppery gold as well. Um, it's almost like a, uh, I don't know whether to call it brass or to call it gold because it's it's that kind of in-between kind of stage. But um, it's really, really nice and, and also works perfectly with the, the rest of the colours of the gems and things. The blade, for me, I, I think the dark blue, adding that extra colour on as well, it, it, again, it works really well with that sort of like, primary color kind of like not triad obviously but the the complementary color between the blue and the red yeah it's um, another example of what i was just saying about the gems really where it's like the instinct would be to go really bright yeah, yeah. um and i'm quite glad that it isn't it's we've spoke about before um how the grim dark style doesn't have to necessarily be achieved just by like loads of weathering powder and everything like that no, no, it can totally. just be achieved with color choices and i feel like this and the bellicor really both kind of fit into that. It feels very grim dark. Yeah, they do. Just based on the colour palette. Yeah, it's great. And I think again, like the, with, with basing as well, like having that sort of really neutral tone basing, it almost looks like he's camouflaged or stealth sort of, sort of stealthed colour wise to the to the to the colour of the environment that he's within as well, which I think is brilliant. Yeah, um, I, I think that's hard to make look good sometimes as well because it can look a bit boring. Yeah, but, um, no, it's done really not well. Not on this one. No, it's done really well. But yeah, absolutely love this. Um, yeah. Really, really love this craft world scheme. I don't know if it's a custom craft world, but it's... it's, it's well, it's interesting. So the client had... This is the fourth instalment um, of Eldar for this client. Um, all, all have been painted by Danny so far. Um, but previously, I think they've kind of mixed and match and they've got a lot of Aspect Warriors previously. So they're kind of yeah. doing their own thing anyway. So I think they quite... They seem to like the idea of having these different sections and different... Uh, I think they specifically reference on one of the older jobs, like this certain group of guardians following a bit of a different path to the the other uh, the rest of the army and things like that. So, um, yeah, I don't think necessarily it fits in with the rest of the army, but it, it's it's the thing. Fourth, thing uh, is, elder elder armies they tend to have a lot of different colours depending on the sort yeah of exactly, and Espe stuff, so. especially with the aspect warriors. Yeah, so. yeah. Now now I look at it now. Obviously, the the shield that, that he's got obviously on his arm, like you can see, obviously that's a black. But then it's it's really nicely toned as well. Again, use of that black has been done on the fins as well as obviously the kneecaps and shield. So when when you first look at it, it looks very very much like it's all very similar hue or the same hue. But then when you dive right in and have a look seeing the way that it's been sectioned with the black use the black spot color essentially on the on the different things i think even the hand i know not the hand isn't but but yeah it's it's really really well done but no awesome model nice and he smashed it very nice um so next up we're going to stick with eldar but different client different painter uh different craft world I've as been, well i've been waiting to talk about this one yeah, yeah. so yeah there you go this for me is probably one of my favorite avatars i think we've ever done as a business um and that i've ever seen just to jump in sorry it's painted by amy and it's uh silver level yeah a latok themed avatar obviously i am super super keen on this i think this is probably one of if not it takes the biscuit for being our, my favourite avatar I think we've ever done as a business. Um, we've done quite a few as well. So that yeah, is uh, yeah. that's strong words. Yeah, it is. I think I, I had I had a chat with Amy about this because obviously I, I knew I knew about the spec and I knew obviously what the, the, the client was asking for on this. And um, to to wrap an avatar in in a craft world's colours is is actually quite a difficult thing because you're trying to show obviously what the avatar is as in like what he is as a, as a character and as a model. 
also have the flame effect, which is obviously is known for. Um, but then obviously, if you go to if you if you put oranges and things like that on it, it goes really far away from the, from the LATOT scheme. So I had a really good chat with Amy about the colours on this, and, and it was really kind of the client to give us you know a, um, kind of like free reign to apply those colours onto the model. I was going to say it was almost entirely free reign. Yeah. They basically just stated they wanted an LATOT themed avatar. Yeah, with a snowy base and away you go. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It, it's it for me. Changing the flames to a, a light blue is a, is a great decision. And I said, Amy's completely. We had a conversation, but Amy took complete lead on on, on color choices and sectioning for this, and she's absolutely smashed it. Like the use of the yellow to denote the head is great. Um, you've got that high contrast with the black tassel on the head as well, which is brilliant. Um, it's really strong, super strong primary color triad, obviously with a red, yellow, and blue. Um, so we knew we knew it was going to look great, but uh, again, hats off to Amy because she's absolutely killed this. It's 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 phenomenal. Like um, yeah, the flames look great. Um, I think we've even got a tutorial for the flames on Patreon. I think we have. Yeah. yeah. So if you do like blue flames, you can check that out. Um, but the yeah, and then obviously you've got the the blue blade as well, which is just really really nice. And again, the base having a bit more of a desaturated kind of like neutral tone to it um, just really boosts how vibrant and bright the avatar is, which is just really nice. Um, all the gold for me. The difficulty with yellow and gold is obviously essentially they read very as a very similar color, um, and sometimes can clash if you've got like a more yellowy metallic. So I think what Amy's done with the, how we're darkening down the gold, and making it look quite ancient and old, just helps separate that from the yellow headdress as well, um, which is which is just brilliant. Um, but yeah, lovely use of, of red for the gems again. Just it's sort of like unifying that triadic sort of scheme quite nicely by just putting a lot more red into the gems and the other colors you can go crazy and start doing different colored gems in different areas and things like that but keeping it very solid one color for gems and, and for the spirit stones is a really good shout but yeah absolutely stunning model um and yeah full credit because amy killed it so uh so yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually like you see a lot of times when people want to tie in an avatar or aspect warriors or something into their craft world w with the avatar specifically the easy option is Paint the tabard, paint yeah. the avatar like normal, and then paint the tabard, tabard in that color. Yeah. Some people prefer that look. I probably would have even gone that way in terms of what I preferred until I've seen this. And yeah. I'm like, oh no, you can do it really well. Yeah, actually. this is just this is just brilliant. So yeah, she absolutely smashed it. Yeah, yeah. brilliant, awesome. Also, this is um, there's an army to follow uh, that avatar. So we've got plenty more characters and an army coming uh, soon, which will hopefully show off. Um, Next up, we've got a uh, kind of custom scheme on this Valdor. I don't know if you just want to take yeah, that yeah. around. Yeah, um, Great. It is on the uh, the separated, separated base, bases, so that yeah. can come apart. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was painted by Rosie. It's a silver level. Um, and uh, as I say, it's a custom scheme. So what's your first thoughts on that? It's really interesting when you see custodians in different colorways. Um, obviously, the traditional being gold, it's their... their instantly visible which is which is obviously the good thing about having them in that gold armor so to see them in a different sort of like uh, different sort of color palette is just is really cool i think it, it it balances out quite a lot of the model quite nicely and what i mean by that is when you look at a custodian and they're like all in gold everything is gold obviously so like looking at some of the little nuanced details on the model it kind of sometimes for me gets a little bit lost like there's like loads of you like, like see things that you wouldn't otherwise yeah see. so so as an example like for example like if you look at his chest i i'm seriously saying this like i never really noticed that he had like the the, the lightning bolts on the chest hmm. um and that's probably because i just get blinded by the amount of metallic obviously gold that's on the min on the miniature when you when you when I've looked at him in the past. I should mention as well, I said custom scheme. It is to follow the solar watch scheme. Obviously, the custom nature of it is that even if you were doing solar watch, I think normally you probably wouldn't put Valdor in no. those colours as well. So it is That's why it's, it's a kind of a custom scheme. Valdor in a way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is to follow the solar watch colours, which is a an actual... Uh, but I think they're, they're kind of like a more whitier, so the, the whitier kind of tone color for me, so it's right. But they, he's got quite a creamy kind of like um, really warm kind of color to him as well. Yeah, so that, that was a specific request of the client. And I think because he was kind of so specific about that, Rosie did actually clarify a few things or do like a little test image of, uh, of, and check that it was all right. Because they basically asked for, a, they, they still wanted it 
white, but they wanted it quite warm. Yeah, yeah. Um, which obviously ends up looking a bit more like bone. No, but, uh, exactly. I think it looks really nice. Yeah, I, I, love, I love the purple blade. I mean, the blade is brilliant and in purple. Um, and a really clever use of orange for the power generator on the back of the blade, like that orange subtle glow. The colours together just works really, really well and contrast brilliantly. For me, the cape, loads of dark and deep tones on the underside here, just to show the light hitting the cape. Obviously, that brighter kind of coloration on the upper facet as well, which is just really nice. The demon skull on the shoulder pad in that deep sort of like maroon just works really well with the the sort of um, uh, porcelain kind of armor that he's got. Um, but yeah, really, really well executed. Um, I think it would be cool as well if you want to just because we can separate the base. So if you want to take the the, uh, the side one off as well, uh, just on towards me. That, oh, this that, this side one. bit here. Okay. So it's blue tacked on just to go. stop it falling, and then you can slide him out. Yeah, let's go and get a proper look at that cape because the back of it is. Brilliant. Yeah, that cape is lovely. Yeah. Yeah, that cape is phenomenal. Really, really well, nicely executed. All the facets that aren't being caught by light, obviously darker is great. And then obviously all the flats, uh, whether they're high or low, um, is uh, done obviously with the lighter colour which as well, which is really nice. But yeah, Rosie's done an amazing job on there. And I like the way that she's um, she's toned the actual gold on the armour as well. There's lots of sh like light, light, light based shading done on the gold just to obviously show where shadows will fall on those areas of the metallics as well which is just great um yeah and uh, uh, the, the thing for me as well is because the because the overall for for me the overall sort of kind of like temperature of the model is really warm there's nothing too cold on the model mm. um even the armor obviously having the sort of subtle shading that it's got gives it a bit of warmth which i think just really helps um for him as a character as well as obviously a miniature but yeah he's he's absolutely awesome um really really nicely done and uh, all the striations on those little claws and beaks and things are just just perfectly done and i've got to give it to rosie because the text on that purity seal is is absolutely exquisite yeah so yeah we really love a good text on purity text seal. on purity seal yeah really yeah. sells it <laughs> yeah it's almost readable so yeah <laughs> really, 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 really good uh yeah but no that's great so the final one i've got to show you this week is a it's a custom service model I love a custom it's a service really model. good example of what we can do with custom service i yeah. think and it's obviously it's unpainted at this stage. We'll yeah, paint yeah. it after this, but um, I still it's always to... good to show the amount of work that the CS team put into these miniatures. I think you know it's when you see a lovely finished CS model, the, the painting does obscure obviously the amount of hours of work that go into the sculpting of it. Not to diminish obviously any of the talent or skill that goes into doing that with the team here at Siege, but what I would say is that I think that's the beauty of a CS model is that it looks like that's how it is exactly you know? yeah and um, so we really need to show these off yeah exactly like this yeah just to show how much work's gone into them yeah it is is really really i mean this is a perfect example of the amount of time and effort that goes not only just into the miniature but also creating a phenomenal base almost like a character style like sort of forge world kind of base kind of thing um which is which is quite cool um but yeah. it's charlie that's worked on this if it was, yeah sorry yeah. i didn't mention yeah, yeah no, charlie no. that sculpted this yeah so um, i i Right from for me from the beginning, like it's just the level of intricacy that's gone into the obvious details which are on it, but also at the same time, it's 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 little things. It's always the little things for me which really show the thought and hard work and intention behind stuff. So, as an example, it, it, not looking at the model at all at the minute, on this back wall here, you've still got quite a bit of plaster attached onto these onto this brickwork, and again, like showing that variance in, in in material and property and detail on there and also from a painting perspective it gives a great opportunity to add different kind of like tones and colors for the different to represent the different materials so again just little things like that that for me really add a lot to it to a miniature jumping onto him this is obviously like a black templar uh, sort of like emperor's champion yeah so it is a it's a difficult one i believe it's a custom character yeah that the clients come up with they gave us a lot of lore um, and uh, information about it. Um, the name of the character is, I think it's like Ascalon, is yep. probably how you're supposed to pronounce Ascalon, it. The yeah. Tarnished, which when you Google that, you do see some uh, some like fan art of the character, and I'm unsure whether the client, that's the client's art of their own character, or if they've like yeah. maybe seen that art somewhere else and ran with it and like, enjoy that character. Yeah. Um, but the idea is that he was a imperial fist praetor um and then he's kind of um crossed the the rubicon primaris and sworn a new oath and gone along with the uh black templars as a as a marshal i think yeah um it's it, it's really great the intricacy that charlie's put into this i mean the skull pads for example is the, the the work that's gone into those skull pads i mean i've recently painted some skull pads on a different model but like i know 
how hard it is for that shape to be rendered and like it's it's he's done a great job of, of doing it um obviously especially with how fine the teeth are yeah they are that's, that's especially for when you want to paint the individual teeth and stuff that's on there but yeah like the it's, it's got a very it's, you know the thing that i really like about it is it's got very much like a almost like a custodian belt kind of like thing with that like the aquila on the belt which i think is quite cool um yeah, and the cross guard on the on the sword has again got an aquila on it, and the, and ha having a, a full power node green stuffed onto the blade as well is is a tiny, tiny, tiny little detail. But he, Charlie's done a really great job of doing that. Um, adding on the extra sort of trim to all of the armor panels as well. Again, getting that as refined and as sharp as as he has is just really, really well done. Um, I know there's a lots and lots of detail that's been added to this, obviously around the sort of mid midsection, like for example the belt. That you've got some straps there. I know the client was very specific on wanting these like flowing straps that went like almost like webbing that sort of kind of like hung around the back of the model. Um, we created like a, a a custom sort of like pistol. It's as big as a bolter, so it's, it's quite a, quite a crazy weapon to be fair. <laughs> but like but like it's almost like a a very like, like a western kind of like sort of six shooter kind of gun thing which is just awesome yeah um, again the, the client was super specific about loadouts and um how the these individual weapons should look and yeah things like the helmet and stuff like that that's the sort of thing you can do at custom services um i mean you can be specific on any job that you get with us but when it's custom service and you can really start choosing exactly how a weapon looks yeah yeah um, it's it's a good example of that. Yeah, and and again, the base obviously I'm not gonna for, you know I'm not gonna take it apart, but the base does obviously fully come apart, and you can obviously yeah similar you know, to the Baldor thing, very similar to Baldor, yeah, bit similar to those kind of Horus Heresy uh, sort of characters, characters. Bases. yeah, which is good because it gives the option for the client to whether they want to game with it or whether they want to have it on a shelf on display. Uh, yeah, but very very keen to to see this once it's painted. I think this will be a, an amazing model, and the transformation will be will be awesome. So so yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. That's everything for this week. They have all been absolutely awesome. So a big thank you for watching this video. I do hope you liked it and all the models which we've shown. If you are interested in a commission with us here at Siege, be it for a character, a custom service model, or an army, head to the description of this video where you'll find a link to our website. From all the team here, Joe and myself, a massive thank you for watching the video. We'll see you very soon on the next one. Take care.